Okay, hello everybody. I have just got my hands on one of the new M1 MacBook Airs, and I'm going to give you my first impressions from a music production standpoint uh, using Logic Pro. I've gone ahead and run some benchmarks. So this is the benchmark we'll be looking at. This is the new Logic Pro benchmark. Uh, if you'll notice, each channel has quite a bit going on. So it's a fairly intense uh, setup per channel strip. And then you just see how many total strips or how many total channels the Logic can run. So I've run this test off screen because I don't want the screen recording to influence the test. So we'll just cut straight to the results. Uh, this top bar is my production machine. So this is a 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro running a quad core i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it was able to run 44 channel strips or 44 channels uh, doing the whole uh, cycle range. So that's about 59 seconds. So the M1 MacBook Air, which you're viewing the screen of right now, we were able to run 90 channel strips when running Logic natively. And when we run Logic via Rosetta, I was able to get 60 channel strips to complete the full cycle. Now this 2017 MacBook Pro, uh, just also I don't think I said it, 16 gigabytes of RAM on the M1 MacBook and on my old MacBook Pro. So this 2017 MacBook Pro has been very reliable for me. There's no mixed session I haven't been able to run, no production session that doesn't uh, work pretty smoothly. There are the occasional dropout if I try to use too many high performance modes. So given the overhead of the M1 MacBook being about twice as performant, it seems like I might be able to get away with um, some more high CPU usage plugin modes in general. The reason I have native versus Rosetta performance is if you haven't seen any other videos yet describing Logic performance, right now all of, pretty much all the plugins need to be updated to work natively, so to run Logic in the native per, uh, performance mode. But if you run Logic through Rosetta, which is a translation layer, you're able to use almost all of the plugins that worked on Intel Macs. So, I think it's interesting that we can still get more performance on the Rosetta mode logic on this MacBook Air than I was able to get on my 15 inch MacBook Pro over here. So there's definitely enough overhead in both native and Rosetta mode to justify this machine's, uh, I guess, use for logic. But let's look at app compatibility because it's not that cut and dry. So uh, first, let me close this so we don't have issues. Uh, this is my most recent mix session. So every plugin on this mix session worked straight out of the box when I ran Logic in Rosetta mode, except for Golfos from Sound Theory and Neutrino from Isotope. So let's kind of dive in a little bit more as to what we're seeing here. So first of all, if I ran this mix session in native Logic mode, it just doesn't work. There's all sorts of issues, uh, skips, crashes, etc. Um, but running it in Rosetta mode, all the plugins that you see in blue work flawlessly as far as I can tell. So with Golfos, I don't think this is a compatibility issue uh, because I read somewhere that Sound Theory has said Golfos should work in emulation or in Rosetta mode. Um, so I think I'm having some kind of issue. I know that uh, when I check my plugin manager, Golfos is being validated by Logic. So it's saying it can use it. Um, I've had no problems with iLock. iLock was able to register Golfos to this machine. So I've sent an email to Sound Theory. I'll get back to you guys on what's up with this once I know. Uh, with Neutrino, I think this is a 32-bit app, and 32-bit apps just aren't supported anymore. Um, as of Catalina, but for sure on all M1 Macs. So they've been kind of ushering us towards this 64-bit uh, environment, and it's finally kind of that moment when 32-bit apps will have to die for at least my workflow going forward um, and eventually for all Mac users' workflows. Now, this plugin isn't crucial to my mixes, although any finished mix, obviously, I won't be able to open and export it properly on this new machine because I can't use this app on this machine. This is just, it was a freebie from Isotope a few years ago. It's kind of a, like an intelligent spectral shaper, so you throw it on a bunch of buses and kind of just get you know, that 2% extra kind of gloss or sheen on the mix. So I usually put it on around halfway through the mix and then just kind of mix into it for the rest of the mix. Um, not a big deal. I wish it had been 64-bit so I could have just kept using it in Rosetta for a little while longer, but that's the way it goes. 
Now, good hertz plugins through Rosetta, all of them are working fine. So if I just kind of play this and we can see, um, yeah, the GUI works just normally. Uh, the sound quality is perfect. If we see our CPU usage, this is for the whole mix. We're hovering, you know, 25% for a couple of the cores and then around, it looks like 12 to 13%, 10 to 15% maybe for the rest of the cores. So the performance is excellent. A lot of overhead and this is a full mix session. Um, now, good Hertz plugins are working. It seems like my Fab Filter plugins are working just fine as well. So, uh, Clang Helm plugins are working. And the only other plugins I'm using, oh, System Overload. Um, the only other plugins I'm using right now are from uh, Mastering the Mix Reference, and that seems to work fine too. Um, I don't have anything loaded in here right now, but it was working on another one of my sessions. Um, so not the most intense mix session. We did just have a dropout. I wonder if that has to do with running the screen recorder on at the same time. Uh, even though the performance is pretty good, I think there are some hits with Rosetta. I mean, we clearly saw that we have about two thirds of the overall performance and not all the plugins are working just right, though most of them seem to be. Um, I will be running more tests to uh, check out uh, various app compatibilities and as apps get or plugins get updated what works natively and what still requires Rosetta or what doesn't even work in Rosetta. Uh, the only other plugin to my knowledge right now that doesn't work for sure are native instrument plugins uh, and that doesn't I think I think it doesn't have anything to do with compatibility but with the uh, installer app uh, it's not the installer app isn't working at all and that's also how the computer authenticates the plugin usage so you just don't have permissions to run the plugins. So I'll let you guys know in future videos the status on all of these things. But so far, I'm very impressed. I'm excited to be able to record on a computer that doesn't have a fan, so I won't be getting fan noise that I have to either denoise or just try to avoid painstakingly. It's a good experience so far. You can see it for yourself that most of the plugins seem to be running just fine in Rosetta, which is pretty incredible, given that usually just upgrading operating systems will break half my plugins. So, yeah, that's what we have so far, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.